Please stand as you are able for the ringing of the bell and our gathering hymn. Welcome to worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on the second Sunday after Epiphany. I am glad to be here, even though it's cold outside, and I am grateful that you all have ventured out as well. Um, does anyone have any announcements? Jennifer. Actually, I have two. Um, first one is to remember to invite everyone who would like to join us at the Welka Women's Retreat. Um, up on Lake Sylvia outside of Annandale. It's happening February 9th, 10th, and 11th. And if you only want to come for Saturday, that is an option, and there are people who may still have room in their car to bring you. So, um, and on behalf of the youth who are enjoying a three-day weekend, um, we have the Youth Need Dough fundraiser, and today we have fresh bread. After today, it will be frozen. But if you would like a loaf of very fresh sourdough bread, we're selling that for $5. And we have a plethora of soups on this cold day. We have sausage tortellini, roasted squash and sweet potato, minestrone, ham and bean, and sausage spinach white bean soup. All for sale for, for $10. So after, uh, after service, maybe Renee will be in the fellowship hall and can sell it for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I am selling it. She's going downstairs for second Sunday. Second <laughs> um, Reminder that next Sunday, uh, January 21st, one week from today, is our annual meeting. 
11.30 a.m. right after worship, a light lunch will be served. Your giving statements for the year are in your mailboxes, so please pick those up. If you have and use offering envelopes, they are out on the table. Please take those with you. There are three poinsettias left. If you ordered one and didn't take it home, please take it home. If you didn't order one and you just want to take it home, please take it home today or forever hold your peace in regards to poinsettias. Um, what else? Also on February 10th, Saturday, it's the conference assembly and that's important this year because it's um, in uh, preparation for the synod-wide assembly where we will be electing a new bishop. Bishop Ann has served the two terms that she is allowed by constitution to serve. So we will be electing a new bishop. That matters. So if you are interested in attending the conference assembly on the 10th, that usually is maybe an hour at the most. It's a small group of us who meet from this area. If you are thinking and praying about wanting to be a candidate for the Senate-wide assembly, please talk with me. Yeti. Oh, thank you. We have five Thursdays in February to um, staff the food shelf. So talk to me, talk to Nettie, talk to Judy, if that is part of your ministry. Paul. Snow shoveling, sign up sheets, on the ushers, yeah. It's time. Who would have thought not until the middle of January were we asking for snow shoveling? And Steve. After what, uh, two years of COVID and last year, uh, we didn't have our sweetheart dinner. Third is the Saturday. It's a Saturday, so three weeks from yesterday. Uh, the menu is kind of the same. We're going to be doing camp style walleye, spicy potatoes, beans, and squash after a salad. The other option is Parmesan chicken, the same potatoes and veggies. So come out and support the youth. They'll be working hard. I know that they impress a lot of people at the Yule Board, so we hope to continue that uh, impressive showing by our youth and uh, help them make some money for their trip down to New Orleans. Lots going on, as always, this coming, no, Wednesday, looking ahead, Wednesday the 31st, the last Wednesday in January, will be set up time for um, sweetheart dinner. So all youth, all youth parents, and anybody else who is just dying to help set up and decorate is welcome to be here at 6.30. And I think that's everything. Worship continues with confession and forgiveness as it is printed on page one in our bulletins. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> we pause a moment um, to remember winter has arrived, it's cold and windy, there's snow on the ground, after the awe of Epiphany, the beauty of the star, the magnificence of the Magi, after the baptism of Jesus, the splendor of the heavens opening, and a dove descending, here we are. We stand kind of in darkness, in the hard place between the wonder of the word made flesh and the conflicting joy and struggle as we attempt to respond to that word. On this eve of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I'm reminded of the words of this great civil rights leader. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence. And toughness multiplies toughness in a descending spiral of destruction. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, he is setting forth a profound and ultimately inescapable admonition. King said we must love our enemies because hate scars the soul and distorts personality. That hate is an evil and dangerous force. That hate brings irreparable damage to the victims and to the one who hates. We've seen its ugly consequences in terrible indignities and injustice perpetrated upon millions of God's children. We must all be in this together, loving and praying for each other. Lord, today I pray we might hold on to the light of epiphany, the light of love. Show us how to let our light shine. Show us how to be light in the darkness. We pray these things in Jesus' name as we prepare to confess our sins and receive forgiveness. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, 
one God, the creator of darkness and light, word of truth and wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and our refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. We sing our confession and forgiveness response. Take, oh, take me as I am. It's printed on page two in our bulletins. I think we sing it through twice. pray together the prayer of the day printed on page two of our bulletins. We pray together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10 and 11 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering under the Lord, or ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, so he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called. Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called for me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord again called, Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called for me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called for me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling for the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls for you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there before, as calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity he knew 
because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel laid there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me, all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading today is from the first letter to Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore. Glorify God in your body. Word of God for the people. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Holly, holly, holly. It's on 172 in the front of our new books. <laughs> according to John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him who Moses in the law and also the, uh, the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, Jesus said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves and calls us. I've heard of preaching to the choir, 
We're not quite there this morning, but not so far from that. So thanks again for braving the cold. I like the story of the young woman who wanted to go to college, but her heart sank when she read the question on the application blank that asked, are you a leader? Being both honest and conscientious, she wrote, no. She finished the rest of the application and returned it, expecting the worst. To her surprise, she received this letter from the college. Dear applicant, a study of the application forms reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. Hooray. She was in. And we are in. Named and claimed and called in our baptism. Called to follow. Not called to have all the resources or all the answers. Not even all the right questions. We are called to follow. Nathaniel learned this. He was skeptical, skeptical at first, but he was transformed. He became a follower because Philip invited him, saw him under the fig tree, and said, Come and see. Come and see. We need to hear these words. We need to share these words. As I look around, as I listen to the evening news, as I read the news clips that pop up on my phone and my computer, the words of 1 Samuel that we heard this morning echo in my mind. Both the word of the Lord and the visions were scarce. It can feel that way. Whatever side of all the stuff we land on, when we allow ourselves to be convinced by leaders whose own lives are nothing we would emulate, whose actions over and over again are nothing we would approve of in friends or family, when we allow ourselves to believe the end justifies the means, when we continue to make exceptions for those we agree with, I wonder. But still, I will keep proclaiming, always there is hope. Hope because the word of the Lord always appears. Appears when it is least expected, even and maybe especially in those times when the word of the Lord and visions seem scarce. The many call stories in our Bible show us that our God is a God who knows us, knows us personally, knows us by name, and calls us into new light, life, calls us to walk in the light, calls us to follow. In baptism, we are called both by our given name and by our adopted name, Christian, that is, of Christ. All the baptized have a calling in God's world. God doesn't just call pastors and deacons. God calls children like Samuel and fishermen and tax collectors. A list of biblical calls includes God called Noah to follow instructions and build an ark. God called Abram and Sarai when they were old to leave their home and follow where God would lead, to go on a journey that would establish a nation. God called the boy Samuel out of a deep sleep, a story that affirms the faith of children. God called Esther, telling her she was made for such a time as this. God called Jonah, who turned out to be a rather reluctant prophet, even after spending a few days in the belly of a fish. God called Mary, a teenage girl, to give birth to the Savior. God called the Magi to follow the light. God called Peter to be a rock upon which a church could be built. God called Paul on the road to Damascus and set him on a path that would transform the world. And he too saw a bright light. All of these pillars of our faith simply answered the call to follow. Not knowing or even dreaming of or imagining all that might be accomplished. Follow and do their best. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, their best becomes giving their everything. What does our discipleship look like? As one writer asks, what have we said about Jesus in our documents, in our favorite hymns, in our stained glass windows? How about in our everyday conversations and actions? Do we see discipleship as a willingness to walk with Jesus, to hear his call and simply follow? Eugene Peterson says that biblical faith is founded in the reality that God addresses us personally. The fundamental conviction, conviction of our faith, he says, is not so much that God is as that God speaks. 
Not just that God is, God speaks. Like the Magi we talked about last week, we must study, we must watch, we must be open, we must listen, and we must follow. God keeps calling leaders in every generation to help heal wounds and share the good news of salvation. You're called, I'm called, we are called. Called to love, called to follow. Jesus finds Philip and Philip finds Nathaniel. The best possible invitation for evangelism, then and now, come and see. That's it, come and see. Every single one of us can invite someone to come and see. And in response to Nathaniel's scorn and sarcasm in today's gospel, Philip does an amazing thing, a grace-filled thing. The same thing Jesus himself had done a little earlier, a few verses earlier. Philip invites Nathaniel to come and see. The same words Jesus used when the disciples asked where he was abiding. Come and see. Follow me. Come and see. Something any of us could say. Yet as simple as these three words are, many of us can't imagine uttering them. Why? Well, most of us would probably say that in our culture, sharing our faith is at best unwelcome and sometimes even comes across as manipulative or offensive. But Philip simply says something that anyone might say when they want to introduce a friend to a new movie or a good book, a new band, or a great cell phone app. He says, come and see, you gotta try this. We invite people to things all the time, to stuff happening after school, to a ball game, to come and try a new restaurant. So we're actually quite good about inviting people to come to lots of things, just not to church. Of course, we usually invite people to those things we really like, things we think they would also like. So maybe we need to ask ourselves, what parts of our church life do we value the most? Why do we come? What do we like? If we're not just coming because we have to, but because we enjoy it, what is it about coming to church that we enjoy? If we can't identify anything, that's a whole different concern. That might be about noticing, noticing where we see God, or noticing that it might be time to make some changes so that there is something we like. Noticing, sharing, and inviting. That's what outreach and evangelism are about. Maybe we will need to practice, practice noticing, noticing what we like and what we don't like. So let's practice. Yeah, here we go again. Turn to the person in front of you or behind you or across the aisle from you and share. Why do you come to church? Or what's the one thing you love about Lindale? Or maybe what is something you wish happened at Lindale? Where have you seen or heard or felt God? Go ahead, practice. Was really just coughing. Sorry. We'll, we'll go with time's up, but I just didn't get the mic off before I coughed. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody want to practice sharing with the whole group? I 
amen to that. We need each other. We need each other in those hard times of grief or struggle, always. Yes, we can't have church without music. Church, church well done becomes an extension of our family and it's more family. Um, a pastor whom I took a class from shared that the first time he tried this talking together in worship, he was a little worried when an elderly man came kind of stomping up to him afterwards. Uh, but the man introduced my professor to his wife and said, I want to thank you. You see, this gal and I have been going to church together for 60 years, and it turns out we've never known why the other comes. We can always learn. Learn to notice, and learn to share, and learn to invite. Thank you for practicing sharing. We might need to continue to practice noticing so that we have even more to share. In the coming week, notice where you see God. We might just practice again. We are called to notice, and to share and to invite again and again and again. Even when we struggle to name or understand or articulate our faith, even when we struggle to share our faith with others, even when we don't feel worthy of God's attention or care, even when we wonder if we believe at all, even when we have a hard time getting ourselves to church or preparing this week's sermon, even then, Jesus will not give up on us. Jesus is there. Jesus is here, determined to give us more than we can possibly imagine. Still saying, saying to each of us, come and see. Still saying, come and follow me. Amen. And we sing our sermon hymn, come and follow me. What number is that? Seven, nine, eight.
As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, Christ made known to all of us, we pray God's blessing on the church, the world, and all creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth. Let leaders of your church and your world be trustworthy and accountable. Give them visions of justice and unity. Bring hope and healing to all communities. Help us answer your call to come and to follow. God of grace. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig, fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for help and healing, especially those we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Ashley, Trent, Sean, Arm, Catherine, Elaine, Dave, Kevin and Diane Big's parents, Betty's friend Diane, and Diane's six-year-old nephew, Palmer, who is hospitalized and very ill. Give you thanks again for the safe arrival of Blauert's great-grandson, Jameson, and we pray for all expectant parents. We lift up all living with chronic illness and those who love them. We lift up those battling cancer, Karen Otto and Renee Schlechter's father, God of grace. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Nudge those who are hearing come and see with regards to serving on council or teaching or music or any leadership opportunities. Make us faithful as we work to be here for good, God of grace. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. We share God's peace with one another. We worship with our offering.
Please stand as you are able. Our offering response is everything is yours, printed on page three in our bulletins. on the bottom of page three in our bulletins. Most merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God loved the world so much that he sent his son Jesus, who did indeed offer himself for us. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We will commune around the altar at the direction of our ushers. You will receive a wafer and a glass of wine or grape juice. The grape juice is in the center of the trays. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. I invite communion assistants to please come forward.
And as you are able for the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Canticle of Turning, number 723. Thank you.
go in peace. You are God's beloved.